The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will this be, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Jesus answered them, Beware that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and they will lead you astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. They will hand you over to be tortured and will put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. Then many will fall away, and they will betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God the Creator, Christ who goes ahead of us, and the Holy Spirit who dwells with us now. Amen. These past couple of weeks, I was visiting family in Vermont. I grew up in a very rural area and have lived my entire adult life in cities. Whenever I return to Vermont, I'm always struck by how quiet it is, especially at night. Falling asleep, there's no cars, no sirens, no music, oftentimes no air conditioners or any noise at all, aside from the occasional cricket. The everyday city noises I am used to are absent. I often notice myself straining to hear something, anything in the midst of the quiet because I've gotten so used to the noise. Because we get used to being surrounded by noise. The digital noises of our phones and devices, the vibrations and beeps and notifications that pull our attention. The verbal and visual noise of the media and ads, washing over us in waiting rooms and on the radio and on billboards. The mental noise that comes with worry and fear and grief and all of the pieces of our lives that we hold on a day-to-day basis. And especially now, at this moment in human history, the noise seems to pile up on top of itself. A crushing cacophony of 24-hour news cycles, violence, illness, fear, scarcity, our lives filled with so much noise that carving out space for connection with each other and with God feels like we might miss something crucial. We can't tune out the pain and injustice that is woven into our lives and the lives of our neighbors. We're called to pay attention. We can't tune out the very real risks of climate change and political instability We are called toward justice. We can't tune out our own reactions and experiences and grief. We are called to live in the world. But we also can't let the noise overwhelm and uproot us. So how do we live faithfully in our noisy world? How do we hear God in the noise? In a time when the word unprecedented has been overused, I find it helpful to ground in the knowledge that this noise is not new when we look at the context of history. Many things might be new for our lifetimes, but not new for our ancestors. Our ancestors experienced years-long pandemics. They experienced wars and political conflict. They experienced genocide and oppression. They experience the complicated reality of holding privilege in some areas and marginalization in others. They experienced the noise that comes with fear and worry and grief and scarcity and the unknown. They lived their lives trying to listen for God and make the best choices they could with the information they had. 
They sinned and fell short and harmed people with their actions and inactions. They followed the path of Jesus, living love in the world. And when we consider the magnitude of changes and destabilization in our climate, while it is new and urgent in our human timeline, in terms of the history of all of creation, Earth has had many seasons and many inhabitants and, extin and extinctions. This moment in human history that we are living in is not isolated from all of the moments that came before, shaping the world to be what it is today. Which means, this moment in human history is not isolated from what will be. Each day, we are shaping the world to come through our choices, through the policies we support, and the way we live our lives. In our text today, we are jumping right into the later part of the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus and his disciples are gathered at the Mount of Olives two days before Jesus is handed over to the religious and civil authorities for crucifixion. This is near the end of his earthbound ministry, and this text is at the beginning of a long set of teachings and parables by Jesus. In today's text, he speaks of what is to come. There will be violence, and war, and earthquakes, and false teachers, and the disciples might lose hope. But it is not the end. There will be uncertainty, and confusion, and doubt, and grief, but it is not the end. There will be betrayal, and breaking trust, and the love of many will grow cold, but it is not the end. Things will be bad and that is not the end. The disciples are looking all around them, looking at how bad and noisy it is. People can't afford food, they can't afford health care, they're being heavily taxed by an empire that does not care about their well-being. And when we look at the rest of the disciples' story, it will get worse. The execution of their teacher, of Jesus, marks a turning point in cosmic history where God declares that death is not the end. But in their lifetimes, in the disciples' lifetimes, things will get worse when Jesus is gone. False teachers, torture, hatred, betrayals. And Jesus, in this moment, is speaking to a community that has already experienced the destruction of their holiest place, to a community whose temple has already been destroyed once, and will be again in the decades following Jesus' death and resurrection. He is speaking to a community that will suddenly need to figure out how to follow his teachings when he's no longer physically present with them, when he isn't there to remind them. He's speaking to a community that will eventually throw their lot in with empire. He is speaking to his own community, saying things are bad, things might get worse, and they are not the end. Jesus speaks these same words to us today. We will experience many endings in our lifetimes. Our ancestors experienced many endings. The world as we know it has ended many times. Anyone who has lost someone dear to them, that is a world that has ended. Anyone who has lost a job or moved states or experienced estrangement, that is a world ended. Anyone who is part of a community that has experienced genocide or enslavement or persecution, that is a world ended. But these endings are not the end of the story. All of the noise, all of the pain, all of the uncertainty, the grief, these are not the end. They are birth pangs, signs of a world pushing to transform, pushing to be something else, something not yet here birthing the kingdom of God where there is enough. But the assurance from Jesus that these are birth pangs and not the end can feel hollow when we are in the midst of the noise. In the midst of it all, it can be hard to trust in God's presence and promise. The promise that this is not the end can feel tenuous and even unbelievable. And still we proclaim resurrection. We ground ourselves in the love and grace of God, and we hold that space for each other when it's hard to trust. 
Beloveds in Christ, there are many endings, but they are not the end. We are surrounded by a cacophony of noise, and we come together to worship in the midst of it all so that we can be fed and nourished, strengthened to listen for God, and to reject the forces that defy God, the forces that would have us believe that nothing can change and nothing can get better. We come together to pray for one another and for our neighbors and to carry the promise of resurrection into a world crying out in labor pains. For this week, I invite you to simply pay attention to the noise. Notice what is holding your attention. Notice what is provoking fear and anxiety. Notice what is pulling you toward despair or toward hope. And may the quiet voice of God begin to rise from the noise. Amen.